But the Knicks tonight beat the San Antonio Spurs in a blowout. Oh, win 111 96, led by none other than Mr. Broadway Barrett by most. Uh, the nine guy by Miss Ashley Moss, who led the way tonight. A lot of good stuff from Manu quickly. Um, you saw that young unit out there looking like they had to redeem themselves after those few games with the whole COVID uh, protocol where people were missing games and we were looking a little sluggish. They looked like they redeemed themselves tonight. Um, Evan Fournier looked like he started off good and he slowed down a little bit, but it didn't matter. It was just enough. A lot of good things to talk about, but more importantly, my favorite thing is that we won four straight at home. Broadway Barrett started to come alive, came out in the second, came out with 14 points by the half, then comes out in the third quarter and continues to go burning into the second. We saw Mitchell Robinson giving us some blocks, right? We saw we saw Emmanuel quickly doing a little bit of everything, whether it was playmaking, scoring, just everything that you want to see in a developing point guard. And then we just took it all away. Third, fourth quarter, we started to just break it all away. And that's what I loved about it, man. I say those are the three big, pe three key pieces for tonight. Manuel quickly, RJ Barrett, Mitchell Robinson gave us what we needed in order to get this win today. That's what those are my takeaways from this game. It's we're getting better at playing at home, which is important. Um, obviously, the advantage of playing in front of your home crowd and on your own court is familiarity, and that's what we've been missing from this Knicks team, especially in the first, the earlier first half of the season, True. but they weren't defending home court. I think also, obviously, R.J. Barrett, 31 points from him. You love to see an R.J. Knight. Um, each and every year, his development just continues, and I think that he's really starting to come into his own as a player. I think we're seeing more productive games from him in some capacity than the previous season and last season, but in previous season, and that's what you want from your young players. You want them to get consistently better each and every um, season and look I like this continuity ba continuity basketball because if you look you have Mitchell Robinson 13 points Burke 16 48 18 I mean yes I know people are gonna bash Julius Randle for not having a productive night but you have to also look at the positives even without it we still won and I think that says a lot about this team um, like, like you guys are both saying that the most important part I feel like um, you know stats and you know single uh, player you know, statistics and all that stuff be damned. The biggest thing is winning at home. We're now four in a row. Started off with that Pistons W. Then it was the Christmas game um, in Atlanta uh, against Atlanta, excuse me. Then the Boston game. All these games were big energy wins. I mean, Pistons, we'll talk about a little bit. And then this one tonight in a blowout against the Spurs. Um, but I, I want to talk a lot about R.J. Bear. I want, I want to spend some time on R.J. Bear because it wasn't just one of those things where it's like R.J. Bear went out there and put up, you know, good po a, a good point night. You know, he was doing this, like a few good things here and there but he still was um, really bad percentage wise from the field on from three and field no he put up a real efficient shooting night uh as far as his ball movement i feel like you know the playmaking ability that a lot of us are really want to see more from rj barrett you saw that at uh in, in a great um deal tonight uh, knicks fans in general that want to see this kid be great this is what we want to see more of not just him shooting the ball from three not just him pulling up mid no we want to see the the total game that rj barrett we know that he can do we want to see that at a more consistent and efficient rate and tonight was definitely that sample size Um, I got to give Randall um, some credit, you know, just to say I, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to let everybody shine. Um, the, the offense runs way better with RJ running the ball right now. Eventually, Emmanuel quickly, I think he's going to eventually take over that spot. The way he's been shooting, the way he's been taking care of the ball. Make sure he doesn't turn it over and everything like that. You know, I remember the earlier the years, you know, he was a little sporadic, you know, trying to find his lane with the point guard situation because he always came off the bench. But um, overall, it was a really good game. Uh I know everybody wants to talk about the trade rumors about Jamie Grant or these other people. The main folk, the main, the main thing that I noticed in the game that was pretty eye opening was how Obi was reacting or how Tim was Tim was taking him out yeah. the game. Rain was have Rain was having a bad night, and they're beating him by what twenty? Why are you putting Randall in still? Let Obi get those minutes and let and honestly, he needs to instill some confidence into Obi and say, "Yo, show me your game. Show me what you can really do, so I can give you." At least more, because it seems like it doesn't matter what he does, he won't give him as much minutes because he thinks that Randall is a better ball handler. He can get a shot better than Obi, and Obi's just a one-dimensional player in his eyes because he thinks, oh, you're just a fast break guy. And honestly, once you're in a half-court situation, it's either the point guard will give you the ball and you stay in the corner. 
this is good, bro. This is good. I just want consistency from Fournier. RJ, I think, is like the flat. I'm telling you, he just needed a break from Randall. I think he needed us, like, a, you know, when, like, Randall got COVID, I think it was good for him, you know, to get in his groove. Not saying mm. that I, didn't, I wanted Randall and COVID. I'm just saying I think no, I when, like, he, that he didn't play, he got in his groove. And then Fournier, like, you know, this is the game that he, he, he needs to have at least each game. Like, I don't want him to score 30, but he had a couple of good defensive possessions. He had good threes. That's all I want, bro. And then the Grimes with, a, with nice plays and the IQ, the passing, it was good. And I, the future is looking good. It's just the thing is, is that when we don't have it, I don't feel confident in all of our players stepping up. Like, we can't have only two players. Like, we can't be scoring 75 points with your with all of your players who play the most minutes, you know, healthy. It's, it's RJ Day. Day. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. All right. I never saw a left-handed windmill before. That was There smooth. it is. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, yeah. I never saw a left-handed windmill before. I mean, he was even doing the Kobe size up. I was surprised. I was like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a good sign. It's yeah. a good sign.